Hey, what's up, everybody? You're tuning in to HowToPlayStock.com. My name is Casey Kepley. Uh, today is March 20th, 2017. In today's video, I'm just going to cover a couple topics here in regards to uh, investing, uh, specifically with banks. And uh, I thought, you know, some of my thoughts that I had on investing right now in the stock markets and kind of, you know, give you some uh, insight into the games that are being played against most uh, retail investors, okay? Now, I was listening to uh, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, he made, you know, he made an interview uh, not too long ago, and I was listening to it, and he had a phrase that he used in the interview, which I thought was really interesting. It caught my attention. And the phrase he used was, uh, cash is trash, okay? Um, this stuff right here, I'm going to show you today exactly why that's trash okay it's worthless it's going to zero and I'm going to show you exactly why that is um, and then I'm also going to show you two different games that are being played all right one uh, on one hand uh, the, the analogy I'm going to use here is kind of I'm going to use football as an analogy the one game being played is on a football field that's basically full of quicksand all right and you're trying to move that yardstick uh, down the football field and you know every time you think that you're you're moving that yardstick towards the goal line uh, you end up running into quicksand and and you can't go anywhere you can't get any traction with your strategy uh, you know in, in investing that is the the field that is the field or the game being played on a field um, that most people are stuck on okay, I'd say like 90% of people are on that football field trying to move forward and, and score a touchdown, you know, when it comes to their investing, um, and they hit the quicksand, okay? They start sinking. And then there's the other game that's being played on a different field, which would be uh, your your one percenters, the bankers, people who know, um, you know, the true wealth that's being created, and, and they know how to create that wealth, okay? <clears throat> so there's two different games being played. And I'm going to cover both of these for you real quick. Uh, I'll try not to go too long with this video today. But so for starters, let's just touch on um, something called fractional reserve lending. Okay. Now, fractional reserve lending is it's it's part of the. Um, banking system that we're in right now all right it's called fractional reserve lending every bank does it and here's how it works so let's say you go to the bank right you make a deposit of ten dollars in your bank account fractional reserve lending allows banks essentially to take ninety percent of whatever you have uh, deposited into the bank and they can lend it out in the form of loans to other people okay and what they do is they charge interest on these loans so that they can make money from other people. Therefore, when you put, say, $10 into a deposit with your bank, it becomes a digital currency. It's digital ones and zeros. It does not exist. As soon as you put it in the bank, it does not exist. Now, if you were to go take your money out all right, in, in a, uh, a banking crisis, like what we're seeing overseas with Greece, Venezuela, and some of these other countries, if we went into a situation with a banking crisis where uh, liquidity got tight, okay, and banks no longer trusted each other, what do you think is going to happen as far as their uh, their trust with you, all right? You're, you're putting your money in, in the bank account and giving it to them, hoping that it's going to be there. But what you got to understand is when you go to a bank and you make a deposit like that, your, your money doesn't, it does not exist anymore. So essentially what you're doing is you're hoping that they'll have your full $10 that you deposited. Okay. When, when you go to try to pull it out of the bank, if you have too many people doing that at the same time, uh, you're going to find out and most people are going to find this out sooner or later with the banking system that we're in right now. They're going to find out when they go to take their money out of the banks that they don't have it. They don't have it, okay? So, you know, you can you can go ahead and test what I'm telling you and and see if, 
for yourself if what I'm telling you is true. Just go to the bank, okay, and try to pull out uh, $5,000 from the bank or $10,000 from your bank account. If you have that money, go ahead and try doing it. See what happens. They're going to fill out, um, they'll have you fill out forms, okay, to, to get your own money out of your out of your freaking bank account because uh, they'll, they'll, you know, mark it or flag it as unusual activity, okay, and that's what they're doing. That's how banks are working now. That's how they're operating. Guys, again, cash is trash. It's ones and zeros in digital form. Most of it does not exist, okay, so you need to remember that. Because what does this have to do with investing? Well, it's your currency that you're using when you invest. Now, I'm going to show you the playing field that I'm talking about here. Now that you know what fractional reserve lending is and you know how banks operate, there's two games being played. And the first one is that quicksand football field I was telling you about. All right, and that's, that's paper assets. Okay. Paper assets are strictly ones and zeros. Everything's digital. So let's say you take your uh, your five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, right? You want to make an investment into a, a stock. So you go through your brokerage firm and you invest in this stock. That is a paper asset. It is in ones and zeros, digital ones and zeros. That's all it is. It doesn't exist. It's it's a lot like a bank. Now I understand if you want to invest and you will be a be a retail investor. Uh, you most certainly have to keep playing this game of the paper assets, okay? And you have to play the game of currency. I mean, there's really no way around it. It's a system that's been set up for us, uh, that they've they've had implemented for us for over 240 years. You're going to have to continue playing that game. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the uh, the financial system as a whole is going to change throughout time. You know, I read a book, it was called uh, Coined. There's a book called Coined out there. So if you get a chance, go ahead and read it because it's really interesting because they talk about how currencies and financial systems will change throughout time. And, uh, you know, the, the financial system that we're in right now um, has been implemented and going for uh, since 1971. All right, Richard Nixon took us off the uh, gold standard, okay? <clears throat> as soon as he did that, as soon as he took us off the gold standard, Back in 1971, the uh, the money in circulation, okay, the cash, became a fiat currency. It's, it's backed by nothing. It doesn't have any value. And the more they print up this of this cash, the more currency that they're printing up, it devalues the uh, value of what that dollar can buy. So essentially, if you print up enough money, this little marker right here might cost you a dollar today, but if you print up enough money here in 10 years... Uh, you print up enough of that money and it goes around in circulation. This little marker right here could cost you 20 bucks. All right, now that's called inflation. Um, and this is what happens when uh, countries print up massive amounts of money. Okay, and that's essentially what we've been doing since 1971. And if you look at any kind of chart um, on currency and, and an M2 uh, credit expansion or base credit money, that's being printed into circulation for the United States. If you look at the charts and the graphs since 1971, they pretty much go parabolic, guys. They go straight up. Like, I mean, hockey stick, just straight up. Okay, and that can, that is not sustainable by any measure, especially when you don't have uh, cash being backed by anything that is real and tangible. And that brings me to the next game that you can play here, which is in hard assets okay now hard assets are stuff that you can physically touch things that you can physically um, get your hands on all right and I'll give you an example of that Let me see if I got, uh... so what I've got here is a, uh, a gold bar okay it's physical you can touch it you can feel it, you can drop it, hits the ground, you can even hear it. That's that's a hard asset, okay? This is the other game that's being played. Uh, the, the one that I was talking about on the different football field, this is the other game that's being played where, you know, you're, you're playing on turf. You're not playing on uh, quicksand. 
you're not playing with a currency that's backed by nothing. You're playing with hard assets, things that create value, create uh, cash flow for you. It might be a business, for instance. Now, it might still be attached to paper assets and pay you a currency, but at least, at least if, if you've got a business that's spitting off cash flow for you, you're not, you know, you, you can use uh, time as leverage so you don't have to trade your time for, for the paper asset. And that's where most people don't understand the game that they're playing. I talk to people who are very educated, okay? They make six figures a year. Most of them are doctors, engineers, business owners. But the problem is they don't understand the game of money that's being played against them by bankers. So see, they might make really good uh, currency or paper asset, um, you know, trash. Cash is trash, okay? I told you I told you that at the beginning of the video. So they're making a, a lot of good toilet paper as, as their currency, and they think that that's the answer and that's the ultimate answer. Well, it's not because eventually it doesn't matter if you have a hundred grand or a million dollars. Okay, if they print up enough currency through the Federal Reserve Bank, they can drive that $100,000 a year salary down to zero. So you might still get your, your money in your bank account coming in from a job that you're trading your time for. But when you go to you know, buy goods from the store or you know, pick up uh, some markers like I was, I was showing you here in this video, you know, you, your groceries, instead of costing $200 a month, they might end up costing you uh, $500, $600 a month. And if you don't believe me in regards to if this has ever happened before, just go back and do a little research on Weimar uh, Germany, okay, and what happened to the, to the mark, which was their currency that they were using at the time, because that's exactly what happened. And that is, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. If you're a retail investor or if you're somebody who's looking to get into investing, go ahead and play the game, all right? You have to, uh, in order to, to stay in the system. So go ahead and play that game, but you have another option. You can start acquiring hard assets, gold, silver, real estate, oil, okay? Create a business that spits off passive income for you so you don't have to work for your, you don't have to trade your time for this trash is cash money or this currency that's being created uh, out of thin air and is backed by nothing. Because you're not going to get ahead if that's the only game you're playing. And so really that's uh, what this video was about, is just trying to, to uh, paint a picture for you as to what games are being played against you, what games you can play, and, and, and the playing fields that you can play on. Because, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be playing a football game in quicksand. I'd rather be playing on, you know, a, a nice clean turf field where I can gain traction and start moving the, that yard chain down the, the football field and eventually get to the end zone and that's the strategy and you know kind of analogy that I'm using here with investing is football uh, just so you can better understand what I'm talking about but that's the kind of game that's that's the playing field that you want to play on okay is, is one where you can gain traction the only way you can do that is to realize uh, the fractional reserve lending how banks operate through the fact uh, fractional reserve lending and you need to understand that your cash is designed to go to zero. So it's it's paradigm shift, okay? Once you realize that and you start working for assets instead of working for this cash is trash, once you start changing your, your uh, ideology uh, when it comes to the money and you start doing things like working for assets instead of working for money, now you're playing on a different uh, uh, ball field, okay? And so that, that's, hopefully, that's what I've done here is kind of, uh, you know, gave, giving me some clarity on what you can do to start doing that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so. Uh, I've, got, I've got several videos out there that I've created on, on what I'm talking about here, uh, such as the, the cash flow quadrants from Robert Kiyosaki. I covered gold, you know, saving cash versus uh, hedging your, or preserving your wealth through hard assets, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe to the, the channel here and you can start checking out some of those uh, videos that I have in my playlist. Um, but other than that, these are today's investors investing tips. You're tuning in to howplaystock.com and I will talk to you guys here later.